At the time I'm writing this, it's November 2021, and a war crimes trial is in progress right now. It is that of a 100-year-old guard from the Sachsenhausen concentration camp. It's hard to believe that 74 years after the main Sachsenhausen trial, another one is going on. The first trial saw 14 life sentences and two of 15 years, all with hard labor. One of those then tried was Paul Sarkovsky, and he is the subject of this video. He was called the execution of Sachsenhausen, but he may not have been. He may even have been innocent of the charges. I don't know. Let's have a look at his life. He was born on the 1st of February 1920 in Breslau in Lower Silesia, Germany. This is now Wrocław in Poland, following the changes to the borders made after the Second World War. He grew up in a communist working class family. His parents were members of the communist KPD and at the age of six he joined the Young Spartacus Bund, their youth organization. His father, Arta Sokovsky, was arrested and charged in 1930 for high treason. He was found guilty and went to prison. This worsened the financial situation of the family. When the Nazis seized power, Arta Sarkovsky was transferred from prison to the Esterwegen concentration camp in northwestern Germany. After two years there, he was released in 1935. In January 1934, Paul Sarkovsky may have only been 13, but the family needed to put food on the table, so he got a job as an errand boy. In December 1934, the Gestapo searched his parents' apartment and arrested the 14-year-old Paul Sarkovsky. After brutal interrogations in which he was asked about his father's alleged connections to the KPD, Paul Sarkovsky was released. In 1936, there was a military coup in Spain, which failed, and that in turn led to the civil war in that country. Whereas the rebel Franco received help from Nazi Germany and fascist Italy, all that the democratically elected legal government in Spain could hope for was assistance from anti-fascists. One of those was Paul Sarkovsky, who sought to join the international brigades despite his youth and lack of military training. However, Sarkovsky and her friend did not get very far. They were caught attempting to illegally cross the German-Czechoslovak border. As a result, in April 1938, Sarkovsky was sent to the Sachsenhausen concentration camp and at that time, at 18, was probably the youngest prisoner in the camp. On arrival, he was beaten with 25 lashes by Gustav Sorger. This was done to every prisoner to show them that they no longer had any rights. Nonetheless, he was prepared to defy the authority in the camp. In August 1939, he attempted to assist a fellow prisoner who had been abused. This was reported and Sarkovsky was punished by being hanged from a stake, a form of torture also known as trapado, where the hands are tied behind the victim who is left to fall or to hang in that position. This will then result in dislocation of the shoulders and intense pain. The torturer was Kurt Ekarius, who was then deputy head of the camp prison. Following this, Ekarayas had Sarkovsky placed in a completely dark cell for 10 weeks. After the dark confinement, Sarkovsky became a trustee in the detention area, where he was responsible for serving food. Sachsenhausen housed a number of special prisoners who lived in much better conditions than other prisoners. Among the prisoners he brought food to, were the former British agent Payne Best, who had been kidnapped by the SD in the Venlo incident in the Netherlands in 1939, the man who planted the bomb in the Munich Beer Hall in 1939, Georg Elsa, former submarine commander and anti-Nazi preacher Martin Niemuller, and Herschel Grinspan, 
the man who had shot the German diplomat Ron Rat in Paris in November 1938, which led to Kristallnacht. In March 1941, Sarkovsky witnessed how Ekarius and another SS man shot a fellow prisoner. He talked to another prisoner about this and Ekarius found out. For this, he was placed in solitary confinement for six months. Sarkovsky was then taken out of the cell by Ekarius on the 3rd of September 1941 and, together with fellow inmate Wilhelm Böhm, led to the roll call square in front of the assembled prisoners of the concentration camp. There, Sarkovsky and fellow inmate Böhm were victims of a mock execution which was stopped at the last moment. Immediately afterwards, at the behest of SS officers, Sarkovsky and Böhm were taken to a warehouse in which captured Red Army soldiers were murdered from behind with a shot in the head. Sarkovsky and Böhm were forced to drag hundreds of bodies out of the execution room. Even after that, Sarkovsky and Böhm were still employed as corpse bearers and corpse burners when transports of captured Red Army soldiers reached Sachsenhausen concentration camp. Sarkovsky stated later that between September 1941 and September 1943, he participated in the cremation of 30,000 prisoner corpses. At the Sachsenhausen trial, he said, up to seven corpses went into the oven at once. When they were incinerated, the next corpses were put into the oven without the ashes of the previous corpses being taken out. The ashes were not taken out of the oven until the ash pan was completely full. This was usually the case after 20 to 25 corpses had been incinerated. The ashes were then put into the ash bunker. After a while, Sarkovsky and Böhm were also forced to carry out executions of fellow prisoners. According to Sarkovsky's testimony, Böhm carried out the executions while he disposed of the bodies. This is when he got the name of the executioner of Sachsenhausen. Due to a typhus infection caused by lice infestation, Sarkovsky and Böhm fell ill. Böhm later died as a result of the infection, while Sarkovsky survived. On the 21st of April 1945, with Soviet troops now in Berlin and only a few kilometers away from the camp, 33,000 of the remaining 36,000 prisoners were marched to the northwest in groups of 500 prisoners. Over the next few days, until liberation by Soviet, Polish and US troops, thousands of prisoners died on these death marches. Berlin was the nearest city and Sarkovsky made his way there after liberation. His hometown of Breslau was now about to be transferred to Poland. Sarkovsky did not enjoy his freedom for very long. In June 1945, he took part in a liberation ceremony for former Sachsenhausen prisoners in the Haus des Rundfunks, the broadcasting centre in Berlin. There he was reported to the police as a former executioner of Sachsenhausen by fellow inmates and arrested. Shortly afterwards, he was handed over to the Soviet NKVD and interrogated. He very soon found himself back in his former accommodation. As from August 1945, Sachsenhausen was reopened with now Soviet management. Housed within it were not only opponents of communism, but also former Nazis, former Wehrmacht and suspected criminals. Sachsenhausen found itself in the Soviet zone of Germany, which was to become East Germany. Many criminals fled to the West and British military authorities handed over at least 12 of the future defendants in the Sachsenhausen trial who were in their custody. They also gave the Soviets extensive evidence and investigative material. By the end of 1946, the Soviets held at least 30 members of the Sachsenhausen camp personnel. Since it was initially unclear, whether the trial would be carried out by a German court or not, 
The Brandenburg Public Prosecutor's Office also launched an investigation into this matter. In addition, the Soviet authorities carried out extensive investigations, in particular into the shooting of thousands of Soviet prisoners of war in Sachsenhausen concentration camp. On the 10th of December 1946, a decision was made for a Soviet military tribunal to try 16 of the personnel from Sachsenhausen. In the course of the preparations for the trial, the accused were interrogated and witnesses rehearsed to ensure that everything would go ahead smoothly for the watching public. The Soviet military tribunal was composed of trial experienced Soviet military lawyers. Lieutenant Colonel Mayorov took over the chairmanship of the Soviet military tribunal in the Sachsenhausen trial. The prosecutors were the public prosecutor, F. Belayev, and his deputy, Nikolai Kotya. Soviet lawyers were assigned to the defendants. Sakovsky was indicted in the Sachsenhausen trial on the 23rd of October 1947. Alongside him in the dock were his former torturers, Ekarias and Gustav Sorger, as well as Camp Commandant Anton Kindl, Camp Doctor Heinz Baumkotter, and others. In total, there were 13 former SS, two former prisoners, and one civilian from the economics ministry who had conducted experiments on the use of shoes. This trial was one of the few publicly managed by the Soviet military tribunal. In addition to international press coverage, the audience also included personalities such as the future East German president, Wilhelm Pieck, future East German prime minister, Otto Krotoval, and writer Anna Segers. The focus of the criminal case was the mass murder of more than 10,000 Soviet prisoners of war in the autumn of 1941. A total of 27 witnesses were summoned, 17 of whom testified in the proceedings. On the 1st of November 1947, the verdict was pronounced. Sakovsky, alongside 13 former SS men, got a life sentence with hard labour. There were two 15-year sentences, also with hard labour, for the other prisoner functionary and the civilian. After the verdicts were pronounced, the prisoners were sent to the Vorkuta Gulag in December 1947. Now Sakovsky got his old job back. He had to dispose of corpses. Five of the former SS men died in the first year. In 1955, West German Chancellor Konrad Adenauer visited the Soviet Union. As a result, in January 1956, prisoners were released, although without amnesty. All of them, except Sakovsky, chose to go to the Federal Republic of Germany. Why did Sakovsky choose East Germany? Could it be that he still believed in communism? In a short while, the SS men who went to West Germany were free, although some of them were tried for more offences there and ended up serving long sentences. Sorger, for example, the man who had beaten Sarkovsky on his arrival at Sachsenhausen, enjoyed only 24 days of freedom before being arrested in West Germany and spending the rest of his life in prison. On his return to Germany, Sarkovsky was imprisoned in Bautzen, then noted for being the hardest prison in the DDR, although no doubt much better than Vorkuta. Today, the former prison in Bautzen is a museum, which can be visited, as you can see in this video I shot in 2010. From Bautzen, Sarkovsky was moved to Brandenburg and then to the detention labour camp in berlin Hohenschönhausen. During his imprisonment, he wrote, on the orders of the Stasi, the diary of Paul Sarkovsky. After his release from prison, he married. His wife later died. Sarkovsky spent the last years of his life under a different name in a retirement home near Leipzig. 
he died on the 28th of July 2006.